Just like we teach kids to ride bikes and swim in a pool, let's teach them how to use these tools, not focus on limiting the time that they spend with them because the time is so broad, but instead we, we model for them how to use them effectively and, and be open to them exploring their interests, even if they're, those aren't our interests. I'm Mackenzie Price and welcome to Gifted Minds Beyond the Classroom. The digital era is here. It's not going away. Whether we like it or not, we have to embrace it. So how can we not only help our kids navigate the online world in the right way, and this might be shocking to some parents, but actually encourage them to hang out there. My guest today is Keith Schacht, an education entrepreneur, and he's going to share how exploring online can inspire kids. And at the end of the episode, I'll give you three takeaways that might make you think twice before you tell your kids to put their phones away. So check it out as we go Beyond the Classroom. Hey Keith, it is so awesome for you to be here. Thanks for coming on to Gifted Minds. Thanks Mackenzie, I'm excited to be here. I would love for you to tell our audience a little bit about yourself, what's your background, what's your uh, history in education? Yes. Um, so I spent the last 10 years uh, running a company I started called Mystery Science. Um, it's grown to become the largest, um, most widely used elementary science curriculum. So it's in about half of elementary schools in the country. So I've spent many, many hours creating content for elementary age kids, which is used by millions of kids now. Um, I'm also um, advising a number of elementary schools. I'm on the board of Higher Ground Education now, which is the largest operator of Montessori schools in the country. Um, I'm a parent of two digital natives, an eight-year-old and 11-year-old boy, uh, so navigating those, those trains. And, you know, my expertise is on the, the preschool and elementary years. I've, I have no teenagers, so I have little insight to offer once we get to the teenage years, but, um, but I'm here to help for the elementary. So I think a lot of parents are freaked out, honestly, by this idea of screen time and how to manage it. We hear about it all the time. It's dangerous. You have to be so careful. Kids are on their screens too much. There's a stat that says, I think recently they've sh shown four to six hours a day is being spent by elementary, middle school age kids. And a lot of parents are like, that's too much. We need to get them outside and playing. We need to get them off their screens. I know that you've got a different take to that, and that's one of the reasons I was really excited to have you on, on here, is how should parents be thinking about managing screen time and what that looks like? First, I think it's important to acknowledge uh, there is danger in screen time. Um, I'm someone who advocates for screen time, and it's easy to, to hear that as, gosh, there's, there, he's ignoring the dangers of screen time, but there are real dangers to screen time. Just like there's real dangers to swimming in a pool, um, and there's real dangers to learning to ride a bike. Like these are some dangerous activities that, that we're allowing our kids to engage in. We're encouraging our kids to engage in. And we do it responsibly by guiding them and spending a lot of time at the early phase and, and spending less time, but still observing and monitoring as they get more proficient at the activity. Screen time to me is just the same. It's something that is dangerous, but there's phenomenal benefits that can be gained from it, just like swimming and, and, and riding a bike. Um, so I think that's the, the first premise I just kind of have to attack head on. But then the second is, um, you know, you're right to point out that a lot of the concern is around how much time kids are spending on screens. And as soon as I hear, hear conversation about, you know, number of hours in screens, I get immediately suspicious because when I think about what my kids do on screens, like their screen time includes talking to their friends on the phone on a screen and watching television on a screen and playing games and doing schoolwork and reading articles or, or Kindle, Kindle books. Uh, there's a whole range of activities that are all done on a screen. And these, these devices have become so useful, it's almost pointless to talk about the screen as, as the category. It's a little bit like talking about being awake as the category. And none of us are concerned about how much awake time our kids have. We, we were critical of what they're doing in that time. And, you know, likewise, that's how we should think about screens and not think about screen time. But let's talk about what kids are doing on these screens. I love thinking about it that way because this is what our life looks like now. We're all, you know, just inundated with spending more time on screen. And there's a lot of ways that that shows up for kids. So tell me what are some of the benefits that you feel like kids can get from screen time? 
Um, you know, if I summarize a lot of parents' views of screen time, it's it's things like, oh, educational app. Well, that's obviously good. I mean, if it's an ed tech learning app, then clearly, you know, and then games, I don't know, maybe Minecraft, that feels like the most learning of the games. Roblox, no, that's that, you know, I, I've heard about dangers there. TikTok, definitely not. So, you know, let me start with TikTok there. Like, I love doing TikTok with my kids, um, you know, multiple times per week, maybe not every day. Um, we'll sit down together and, and go through TikTok. And, you know, my, my kids will do it on their own as well. But I remember one session, you know, me sitting down going through it. In 20 minutes, you know, we swipe and we saw a video of a family that lives out of an RV and travels the country and they just homeschool. And my kids were, were blown away by this. Like, these kids don't have a house? Like, they, they, what, they, what, do they come home from vacation? And, you know, I have to explain this. And then we swipe and, you know, we see a video of a plane being refueled in, in, in the air. And my kids are like, what? Planes don't have to land to be refueled? I don't know they could be refueled. And we swipe and it's kids jump roping. My kids had never seen jump roping before. Kids don't really jump rope these days. And, you know, a, a just a dozen different phenomenal experiences in the world that my kids didn't know existed. And just that exposure to the range of experiences that are possible in the world, like full stop, that, that is, is valuable in and of itself. And screens and TikTok and YouTube, but screens in general are, are a unique opportunity to give kids that, that kind of exposure. That really is true. I mean, you get global exposure to the way different people live, to things that are going on, as well as um, you know, opportunities, jobs, all that kind of stuff. I've always been amazed when my daughters will come home sometimes talking about something in politics or a current event. And I'm like, where'd you hear about that? TikTok? I'm like, oh, wow, you're not just doing dances on TikTok anymore. There's so much to see. That's totally yeah. true. What else do you see as a benefit? So, you know, that's, yeah, that's the first one, which is basically exposure to this range. But, you know, let me tell you a story um, that really, highlights the second one. I, I was at a play date, you know, at a friend's house and, and there was another, another family over that, that I hadn't met before. And I was, I was talking with one of the parents um, and this parent, you know, made a kind of casual remark about, um, you know, his daughter's performance in school and how it was really important that, you know, she grow up and be a, you know, he rattled off a list of professions that he thought his daughter should be spending more time preparing for, you know, and this is like late elementary school kid. Um, and I, I have fun challenging this kind of view. And I, and I, I, I talked about, uh, you know, I gave some examples of, of the range of careers that are actually possible today. But I, you know, I basically was trying to convince this parent that anything his daughter was into, it's possible for her to have a career doing that. Like the, the menu of career options in the world are really that broad. There are an unlimited number of career possibilities. And for kids to come to appreciate like, Wow, whatever it is that I'm into, it's possible that 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 passion could be my career. Like there could be alignment between those. That just as a parent, that's one of the most important takeaways that I want my kids to to grow up with. And screen times in in general and social media in particular is a really phenomenal tool to help kids explore their passions. Both explore them for themselves, like play a video game or, or fly in a plane, you know, like a left flight simulator of a plane or um, I mean, do, uh, learn, learn, even if it's a physical activity like soccer, like learn soccer tricks or juggling or, you know, the, the range of possible interests that kids might have is incredibly broad. And, the, and these devices can be used as a tool to pursue any of those interests. They totally are, especially when you think about the idea that kids today, there's jobs that they're gonna be doing that haven't even been invented yet. And we have seen that to be so true in the last 20 years, probably even the people who are living in a van traveling around the world, that's like their job. They figured out how to make money doing that. I think that is one of the really big benefits of this digital era where kids are starting to see like, oh, what are the things that I want to spend my free time on and how can I turn that into a career in my future? And it's, yeah, I like that you mentioned that. And it's worth highlighting. I think many parents, um, this is completely understandable, but I think many parents have a little bit of an allergic reaction to their kid wasting time. And I think there's an opportunity for a perspective shift. If your child is going deep on something they're interested in, I personally don't think that's a waste of time. That's part of developing a child into a passionate valuer. School does a phenomenal job helping kids learn how to think, how to use their mind, how to figure out the world. But kids also need to, to decide what they want to apply this mind to. 
And that's a hard choice. And many, many grownups like do really well in school and then go to a great college and graduate college and feel like they never really figure out what their what their calling is in life or or, or you know what they're passionate about. And and so so this isn't me undermining school, but just balancing this this focus on how to think with this time outside of school to figure out what it is that I want to focus on. Mm -hmm. I watched an interview with Mr. Beast, who is like, you know, the, the best YouTube star in the world. And I remember him saying when he was a kid, you know, he was obsessed with just YouTube, like learning about whatever he could. And his parents are thinking, you're going to be living in our basement for the rest of your life. It's going to be terrible. And he figured out how to take this obsession and turn it into a major business, which is amazing. I hear about a lot of Mr. Beast in my house. I don't know if he's made it into your house, but yeah, he's, big no, in ours. He, he's a big one. But there's a whole range of YouTubers who are trying to figure out how to monetize beyond just ads. And many of them are branching out into businesses. Um, I forget which YouTuber has launched a line of chocolate bars. I think that might be Mr. Beast. And, and there's another one, I think it's Logan Paul, who's launched an energy drink. Like my kids were excited to buy these and try them themselves. And it blew their mind that this person they feel like they know just decided to launch an energy drink. Like, I didn't know you could do that. You know, we had a whole conversation about that here at home. So I have a friend whose son is obsessed with Minecraft. When he was like 10 years old, I mean, they just, it was so hard to pull him away and they were trying to put in regulations. You know, you can only have this much screen time each night or whatever. But one day he shows up uh, to his mom and he's like, mom, check your Venmo account. You know, my friend's like, um, there is a payment for $500. What is this? He's like, I've been building Minecraft cities. And he had gone and started contracting work out and ended up making like a pretty good amount of money from building these Minecraft cities. Uh, so every time she'd get a Venmo account, she'd be like, oh yeah, this, this belongs to Ben. This is definitely his. But I mean, at 10 years old to have like a, an idea of how to make something out of your passion and interest, it really caused my friends to kind of flip like, oh, this is actually kind of cool. Let's help him yeah. figure out how to support him on that business. And I think it's easier for us parents to see this when it starts to look entrepreneurial because then we start to recognize it as like, oh, that could be a career. I mean, I have a friend who's, who's my age. And so he grew up in the Nintendo era. And he talked about being, you know, he's the last of, I don't know, four or five kids. And he jokes like his parents had given up on parenting by the time he came around. He was allowed unlimited Nintendo time and he went deep on it. And, and he, today he's a game designer and he credits a lot of his passion for games to be these hours that he spent absorbed in games as a child. And he thinks that if he didn't do that, he probably wouldn't be a game designer today. And he wasn't designing games as a child. Like I think to his parents, if they were really critical, they might not have recognize this as like, gosh, when are you going to start building your own games? When are you going to start making money with this? Like that didn't happen until post-college for him. But still, it was the it was the nurturing of an interest, a, a passion that I think is the real virtue in so many of these activities. I love that. It's so true. Uh, my younger daughter who's 15. She got obsessed with TikTok kind of early on, you know, at age 11 or 12. And I had very much had this opinion. TikTok is dangerous and bad and we have to be really careful but it was interesting because when we we started talking about this interest in TikTok, i started talking to her about the idea of how can you think of yourself not just as a consumer of information but be thoughtful around what you're consuming right make sure that you're getting good information and you're not just filling your brain with like garbage and we had a lot of conversations about that and over time she would start to again come home with things like let me talk about some current events that i've noticed or some things that are going on you know politically which we can argue maybe that could be garbage as well but it was just things beyond what i had initially thought TikTok was about and it was really neat. And then we kind of moved into this idea of, well, not only be a consumer, could you be a creator and a contributor? And if you are going to contribute, can you do it in a positive way? And so she started doing, you know, kind of a motivational, like ballet account. Hey, you know, I started dance at age 12 and I was able to get on point quickly. You can do it too. And that's morphed over time. Now she's has a TikTok account. She's got 160,000 uh, followers and she does these things and she has turned it into the ability to monetize. Um, so she's making money, which is awesome. That entrepreneurial spirit is great. But what's been really cool for me to see is she's starting to notice the 
aspects of her little business that she enjoys. She's like, yeah. I love the marketing analysis. I love figuring out what type of stuff goes viral, how you start promoting. She doesn't necessarily love being, you know, doing on camera filming. So she's like, I think I might be interested in some of the behind the scenes stuff. And I found this to be awesome. And I have friends, I was at a book club the other night and my friends are like, wait, your daughter's on TikTok. Isn't that a bad thing? And I'm like, Right now, with all the things she's learning from it, I think it's fantastic. Um, and so it really has changed kind of my opinion around this. However, one of the things I hear from what you're saying and kind of the stuff that I've been doing is it really does rely on like proactive kind of involvement in parenting. And you did say you sit down with your kids a few times a week and you're watching stuff. Talk to us a little about that for the parent that's just a little nervous about like, I don't know what my kid's seeing when I'm not there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's, it's like learning to ride a bike or, or learning to swim in a pool. Like there's real dangers there. And we don't just throw our kids in the pool. We, we model and guide them and even have lessons. And then the amount that we supervise lessons over time, as we see the children are, are comfortable and navigating this new terrain well, you know, and, I'm, and I use those words to describe any activity which has some danger. And so I think that's, that's the way that we need to do it with screens as well. I think one of the challenging things about doing that as a parent with screens is, you know, if we're already in a position where we've established such a kind of stressful adversarial relationship with our child and screen, then, then there can be just a whole mode shift that needs to happen. Um, because your child might all, you know, there might already be a relationship of like, gosh, again, you're spending so much time. It's such a waste of time. And, and there's a, there's a bit of a reset with just like, Hey, you know what? Maybe this, this isn't a waste of time. Maybe I can view, you pursuing your interests, even though they're not my interests, you pursuing your interests as a valuable thing and help you learn how to be safe in this environment, but not restrictive in this environment, just, just safe. Um, you know, a, a funny joke I, I sometimes make with parents is, you know, I remember when, when with a lot of preschool age kids, one of the things they love to do is watch kids open toys. And that feels like one of the most inane like things is my child spends hours watching these other kids play with toys. Why don't they play with their own toys? And, you know, and then as kids get older, it's like they watch kids play video games. Why don't they play the video games themselves? And I'm reminded of us grownups who like to watch grownups cook in the kitchen rather than cook in the kitchen ourselves or remodel their bathroom instead of us remodeling our bathroom. Like there's something inherently satisfying about as humans watching other humans like us do activities that we enjoy engaging in, even when we don't want to engage in them. So there's, there's a mindset shift. Absolutely. Well, think about when we were young, our parents would send us outside and be like, see ya by dark, just go out and do that. And they weren't monitoring what we were doing. They weren't seeing that. And I think we have to make that same shift as parents in this age to know like a lot of that activity and that independence that kids are getting just looks a little different than what we're used to. Um, and I think what you said about this idea of having just a shift in the way that we think of it, instead of saying, this is the scary, dangerous beast that we need to tame. It's like, this is a tool that we need to teach our kids how to use well and how to get the most out of it. Right. Cause it's, yeah. it's going to be here forever. And the independence you mentioned, I think that's, that's, that's another phenomenal benefit. Like we've talked about exposure to the range of things in the world. And we've talked about kind of the menu of, of career options that a kid can have by pursuing their passions. But independence is something that's, that's hard to come by for kids today. Like, like you said, we don't just sort of send them out to go play in the street and run over to a neighbor's house. Like we live in a world of scheduled play dates and very oftentimes scheduled structured activities or, or sports after school and, and a lot less time for kids to just decide on their own what it is that they want to pursue. And screens are, are a rare opportunity for kids to actually be independent in that way. Like I see my kids come home from school and, and you know, see who's online right now and then, and then do a couple FaceTime calls and, and find a friend that's available. And then, and then they negotiate which Roblox game they're going to jump into. And then even in these Roblox games, there's often a lot of like, okay, you go over there, you go over there. No, 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 don't do that. Oh, we got to start over. And that's the same kind of play I did in the backyard. Kids are now doing it in the virtual yard. And sh there's less physical activity there, you know, but, but there's, there's so much of the same elements that, that exist in the real world play. Like, I, I think of it as real world play, even though it's digital, like it's real digital play. 
I totally agree. It is a social experience. It just looks a little bit different than we realize um, it could look. So I love everything you're saying about this. And I really hope parents will be able to take this and kind of look and say, there is a way to, to view screen time and how our kids spend it. And it doesn't have to just be this scary, dangerous thing. Yeah, absolutely agree. Just like we teach kids to ride bikes and swim in a pool, let's teach them how to use these tools not focus on limiting the time that they spend with them because the time is so broad, but instead we, we model for them how to use them effectively and, and be open to them exploring their interests, even if they're, those aren't our interests. Absolutely. Keith, thank you so much for joining me. I love this conversation. I love what you're yeah. um, sharing and I think it's great. We need parents to be willing to kind of open up and think about it. So thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks Mackenzie. I really enjoyed this. It's great. Ready for today's takeaways? Here are the three things from my conversation with Keith that might make you think twice before you tell your kids to put their phones away. Number one, spend time with your child engaging online. Look at social media together or play a video game with them and have conversations about what you see. Number two, model good ways of engaging online and keep communication open about screen time. Just like you model how to interact in the real world, do the same in the virtual world. Talk with them about safety, how to focus on good content, and to talk with you about what they see and do. And number three, encourage them to brainstorm ways they can be positive producers and not just consumers. Do they love video games? Encourage them to code their own game or create one with friends. Do they like TikTok or YouTube? Help them think about content they could make that would be positive and helpful. And for all of your friends who can relate, tell them about Gifted Minds. Check us out on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. And leave us a review. Let's go crush this week. If you're finding this conversation about parenting helpful, hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks.